Okay, so thank you for coming. Um, what we're gonna talk about is like the guy said, uh, hard surface design. Um, come on. It's not a good start. <laughs> Wait. It was working five minutes ago. <laughs> Uh huh. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna say who basically talk about who I am, uh, start talking with vehicles, and then we're just gonna take two examples from Wolfstein. Uh, it's a two class ball, it's the monowheel, and it's the laser hunt. And then also we're gonna go over some personal work. Afterwards, feel free to come up and just ask questions about my work or how we do stuff. I'm not gonna be able to cover everything, so just come up afterwards and have a talk. So I'm a 26 year old. Um, I work at Machine Games. I'm not good at everything. I'm just good at hard surface stuff and designing. Well, I'm average at designing. Uh, I think that's a good thing. Don't be good at everything or don't try to be good at everything. Just take one specific part and just get really good at it. Um, I'm really interested into, into the French Revolution, NASA, and the Cold War. My favorite artists are Mike Hill and Peg Gulab. Peg Gulab is one of the artists at Machine Games. Um, and the reason I'm so interested in those guys is because they make sci-fi, but it's sci-fi based on real stuff, it's not far-fetched, everything makes sense. Uh, next to that, I like history documentaries, just when I work, I like to have something in the background that kind of educates me. Next to that, I'm, um, yeah, I like to use art as an expression, some sort of emotion, something to actually start a conversation about. It's nothing nicer than just having people come to your desk and be able to talk about it. And, yeah, inspire people. So, education. I went to art school when I was 18 years old. I dropped out when I was 21. Uh, school is not for me was a really bad choice for me. So I just locked myself up in my room for eight months and I got a job at Machine Games. So yeah, school is not for everybody. I think the best way of learning stuff is just by picking your own battles, picking your own things that interest you. Just fail and try again. It's the best way of learning. I think if you avoid hand-holding, that's a good thing. Like if it's easy, it's easy to just have a teacher and say, do this and do that. So you're not going to learn stuff. I think it's way better to just try it yourself and see what works for you and what doesn't. Um, so yeah, avoid hand-holding and self-education is the best way of learning stuff. And again, I would like to say, this is your portfolio. If you make a portfolio, it should show you, show me who you are. Uh, if you're interested in guns, make a lot of guns. If you're interested in, in cars, make cars, then choose the cars you like. Basically, it should be an extension of you as a person. I don't like people who make like your standard AK gun and then just a Ferrari and then just a sci-fi hallway. It's like that's, everybody does that. I want to see what you're interested in. I want to see who you are as a person. So yeah, set goals for yourself. Go to the Polycan to recaps or do the station picks, uh, monthly deliveries. So that's what I did. When I left school, I set myself a goal. Uh, back in my days, there was no art station. So the way I had to do stuff is I had to, I gave myself the goal to make something every month. I would spend a whole month on making one piece, and I want that piece to make it into the art station recap. Uh, and that way I knew that people would get to notice me and see my work. And if it kept repeating, I would get a job eventually. I was really lucky. I worked for eight months and my eight pieces got into the recap. I think that's a really good way of just dealing with pressure and planning. It's just like you have to educate yourself and make sure that every piece is better than the next one. So that's why I would say to people who don't go to school, just make sure you keep working and people see your work and they see like, oh wow, he, he keeps going. That's that's really important. And then I would say, yeah, topology for people who are into 3D. Um, I like clean topology. Uh, there's a lot of fancy stuff now like edge shaders or booleans. It's all nice, but I just like the basic understanding of 3D. Just really clean edge flow. That's for me is super nice. Just as long as it looks elegant, it's it's really important for me. Uh, another example is this. When I make something, I like to just draw over a picture first and see how the edge flow would go. It's an easy way for me just to get ahead of myself, basically learning how to how I would approach the, a complicated model before starting on it. And something else like I'd like to point out is when I went to before I get in, in well before I got into the industry, I like to just make a lot of cars, just one day, one car every day, just to keep myself going and to learn stuff. Uh, they they don't look nice, but it just keep, gives you momentum and you get better at it. And you you don't get scared anymore of making a car. Um, this is another example of uh, a car in my school. Uh, this was actually a plastic strip. So what happened is that people could come up to the car and just do it themselves, and then somebody else would judge them. And it was really nice because like it's it's a lot of work to actually 
first put them all on there, but if you fuck up, you have to redo everything. So it is a lot of fun, and it's, it's something that sticks with you. Um, and it's another example of stuff from Wolfstein, a clean topology. I cannot mention that enough. Clean topology for me is key, just showing how you understand modeling. So, um, first I want to say half of the lecture is just about vehicles, and the other half is about all is about designing and Wolfstein. So this might be the boring part for most people, but I just want to mention this. Um, vehicles can be storytellers as well. Think about guns, environments, they all tell a story characters as well. So vehicles should do that as well. Let's take a civilian car as an example. I always ask myself the same questions. Um, what are the cliches about the car? Who would be using it? And how do I turn this around? So let's take an FBI car, uh, SUV. We could say, oh, the cliche is it's, it's getting used by the FBI. What are the characteristics? It's black, it has tinted windows, it has flashing lights, a grill to step on. And then you just say, what if all those things are gone? Where could I use that car? And then you'd be like, oh, could be an embassy car. It still could be still a black car, but you just add some flags on it, some special number plate, and you've got a different car. Same with the BMW, who's using it? Well, rich people, it's clean. Uh, and then you're like, what if I turn that around? Well, then we could say, it could be a taxi. Most in the Eastern countries, they got taxis that are BMWs, and Mexico is one of the biggest factories in that. So again, now that you say Mexico, well, maybe drug cartels are the cliché, and then it could turn into an escape car. This is an example. Just a BMW that is not used by rich people, just in Mexico, that is used as an escape car. Another example is a pickup truck. One could be a family car, this one. Just add some top box, some bicycles, some luggage. Uh, and then the other one could be a Taliban car, or a a uh, technical one, you just add a machine gun on it y that you not you can't see <laughs> some ammo boxes and a broken window and you got two cars different story, s same asset same with the inside, just to get part the steering wheel but uh, uh, how do you call these, these I, I can never forget, you know the bag that comes out of it, you know <laughs> that saves your life, one of those and you got a different story same with props, uh, make everything look interesting for my view corner, I would say, or angle. If you think about a car, a car has two unique sides because of the gas tank. Uh, it's a lot of work for cars, but for props, it's the same. Uh, think about a closet. If you have a closet and you delete the back side, level designers are not able to turn the closet upside down. So make sure that every prop looks interesting from every corner, every direction. So if people want to play with them, if they want to turn them upside down, it still has to look interesting. This is an example. Uh, same with props on vehicles. Make sure that things add stuff, it adds stuff to the silhouette. These ties are not all one in one straight line, they add silhouette to it. Same with these. Uh, one is, is folded up, one is open, it adds something to it. Same with the antenna. Not all the antennas are standing up, some of them are bended over. Uh, I'm gonna go a bit quick because I want to make sure we have time for Q&A, so sorry for rushing a bit. Same with taxi cars or police cars in New York. They're the same car, just different colors, different albedo, just stickers and add-ons, and you've got a different car. This is what we did for Wolfenstein. We, I didn't. I was the only vehicle artist, and I, I had to rush a lot. So I made one car, and then we just turned it into one, into two different versions. Uh, yeah, uh, this is an example. It was just cost-effective, uh, just different add-ons. It saves us a lot of work, and this is uh, how it looked. As long as the vehicle blends in nicely into the environment, it works. You don't have to spend weeks and weeks on one vehicle. People are just gonna shoot their way around it or rush to the the map. It's not. It's not that piece of art that counts. It's this if that makes any sense to anybody. Same with these, uh, one vehicle took a lot of work, so I was like, well, better turn it into something else. It's the same vehicle, just sliced off the front, has different props on it. Same with this one. Same with this tank. Different silhouettes, different shapes, different props. It looks different, it's good enough. And that's something I want to point out. Uh, if you make vehicles, I think, um, especially f in the industry, for, uh, and especially machine games, there's a l I'm the only vehicle artist, so I have a lot of work and a lot of pressure to make sure as we get as many as possible. So when I make a vehicle, I try to talk to my level designers and to the gameplay people, just be like, hey, this is going to take at least a couple of weeks. You should make sure we could reuse this vehicle in as many ways as possible. So this is the same truck. It's called the LMTV truck. And it's the idea was, if you make one truck, well, add different gameplay purposes to it. Gas tank on it? Well, it could be progress blocker. Put that thing in, f in front of a gate, you blow up the gas tank, it explodes, the gate opens up, you can progress. This could be also like a, a cover piece or a blocker so people cannot progress. If you wanna, if you have a long street and like, oh, we don't want to make the other side of the street, you could put that in front of it and people know they cannot go to that point. This could be an ammo, uh, a gameplay purpose. It could be where you pick up ammo 
and just add some yellow corners or yellow access to it, and people are like, oh, different silhouette, some different colors, this, this is where I have to go to pick up ammo. So it's all about making sure the silhouette always looks different and people can recognize the silhouette and link it to the specific purpose in the game. This is something else. Uh, everybody knows maybe dioramas, the small box that you can paint. Um, those are really cool because, I mean, everybody can buy them, but to make them look interesting, it takes a lot of skills. And I like to have my inspiration from that. If I have, if I have no idea how to make something look interesting, I just go to these small dioramas and just look how they look interesting. Notice how everything is a bit tilted and it's not straight and there's different colors and stuff. So what you should do, make sure that not everything is monotone. Same with hard surface stuff. Uh, it's all hard surface, so make sure when you make something, it has some organic elements to it. Uh, think about Jet Fighter. This is from Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. I think this is one of the best designed games, by the way. It's it's amazing. Um, it's all hard surface, but the inside still is controlled by or is controlled by a human. So it needs some sort of comfort. So add some organic shapes to it. Something that makes it easier for the people to drive the vehicle, like you know the thing that where you can put your hand on when when controlling the joystick. So yeah, go for 80-20% hard surface organic. Just something to break up all those hard, cold shapes. This is another camp example. Same car, just different shapes, different silhouettes. And now for the cool part. Oh, not yet. Um, this is another example. It's the Kubelwagen from Wolfstein. Uh, only had time to make one car, but I wanted to make different silhouettes. So at least when you had like f three of these standing next to each other, it would not look boring. It's just like same car, just different add-ons. So in summary, just pick up your silhouettes, uh, think about gameplay functions, use add-ons, and use props and organic shapes. These are some personal pieces, by the way. And now for the cool part, Wolfenstein, the new Colossus. So we talked about vehicles now, and I wish I could say we did all of this on Wolfenstein, but we didn't, because I was the only vehicle artist, so I had a lot of work to do. So I had to come up with a different pipeline. Uh, first of all, sci-fi in Wolfenstein is amazing. I want to say that I can show you as many vehicles as possible, but we got an amazing concept department. It's only three people, which is insane. It's most peop most studi studios have like 10, 20 people. We got three people. One does characters, one does environments, and the other one does the props and the vehicles and all the, you know, all the yeah, all the hero assets basically. And it's amazing that these things, these guys are the heroes of machine games. Uh yeah. So what is Cypher in Wolfstein? It's Retro 60, heavy, over-engineered. It still has to kind of make a little bit of sense, but it also has to look fantastic. It has to be like, wow, this this looks amazing. Um, we always say, like, every time you get concepts, like, everybody fights to make it. it. That's how amazing they look like. And this is one of the examples. And they have to add something to the universe. Uh, we don't like to make stuff just to make it look cool. They have to fit into this, the Wolfstein universe. And again, a little bit believable. You can see still the term IDs or the functionality. And, uh, we don't go bad shit crazy most of the time. Uh, Machine Kiger. Machine Kiger is one of the biggest examples of the biggest inspirations we have. Uh, look that up. It's an amazing universe. Uh, we like shapes, curved shapes, but still like a lot of micro detail on them. Um, basically stuff that makes it look believable. And we like dramatic colors as well. Uh, stuff that makes it look evil and intriguing. We are part of Cinemax, which means we are also have the Fallout universe. Fallout is cool. Uh, not going to say anything bad about Fallout, but it's not us. Uh, we don't. We are not the Jetsons. We are heavy over-engineered designs. This is an example from our director when we started on the Colossus. He's like, "This is what we're going to do. Everything is going to look enormous. I don't care how we're going to do it, but everything has to look gigantic." And it was really cool to do that. I mean, look at that ball. It's like the size of a human. So yeah. Uh, so kind of had to slide it in because I kind of changed position before I came here, but I became senior to the asset machine games, meant I'm responsible for all the hero assets, the cinematic assets, the robots, the vehicles, and yeah, that's it. And again, doing Wolfstein 2, I worked 16 hours for 11 months, nobody forced me to, nobody said you have to, but I was like, it was my first triple A game from A to, well, from start till the end, and I wanted to prove myself, I was like, I, I get to do all this cool stuff, I want to, every piece has to look amazing, so I was like, I need to work my ass off to, sh to prove, not to only to other people, but to myself, I can do this. And I'm still don't get it. I'm super happy with all the stuff I was allowed to do. Uh, and I have to thank my producer for that, Joe, Joe Miller, and actually all the elites and other producers that are involved in it, but especially that guy. These are a couple of the props I did, actually. Uh, just showing you that I make a lot of 
cool stuff, big stuff, but at the same time, it's cool sometimes to make small stuff. It's like when you make a robot, you work on that for a month, and the problem is you see other people making props on a daily basis, it's like, oh shit, they are so much... They, they feel more useful in the game, you know? Because it's like, my robot is just one big piece in the game, but you cannot overuse it. Well, these small props, you can use them almost everywhere in the map. And that's sometimes really cool. Just to make small props, you're going to get better at your basic understanding of how the pipeline works. At the same time, these things add way more to the map or to the game than my gigantic vehicles, if that makes any sense. Uh, so yeah, games are all about teamwork. And these are some people, actually, that I want to thank. Uh, for the teamwork. I would say if anybody wants to know the names of the concept artists, these are the ones. It's Per Gulab, it's Christoph Louvius and Matisse Astenwald. Uh, only Christoph has our station for people who are interested, but I'm trying to push these two to show their work because they are amazing. Uh, they, I have never met such an amazing concept artist as those two, especially this guy. He's, uh, he's amazing. Um, so these are some examples of the vehicles I do. I'm going to go to them really quickly because we don't have time for that. And you can find them on my art station. So. These are all done for Wolfstein. Um. So yeah, most of them are vehicles. There we go. So now we're going to get to the examples. One of them is the tube transport. This was designed by Per Gulab. Um, I, can, I think we can all agree it looks stunning. Um, yeah. The thing with machine games is we only got three concept artists. So, so what happens is they would do one amazing concept for the front, but they would not have time to do the back. So they would just kind of photo bash, and then just like over here, you can see it's a lot of scribbles, just the kind of stuff. It's like do whatever you want, Matthias, as long as it kind of fits into the style of the front, you can do what you want. Same with this, like not everything is defined, and we don't need that. It's really nice as a 3D artist just to still get some freedom, and that's what I like about machine games. It's not you get this concept and you have to follow immediate exactly it's like our uh, art is super easy to work with it's like look this is what i want in this shape or sh form but if you want to change something go ahead like this is really cool like this is not defined it's like do whatever you want and like same with this it's like i don't know how the inside looks like go go wild and that's really cool at machine games it's not like somebody looks over your shoulder all the time like nah not this it's like you get freedom to uh, to become a better artist and designer yourself and then sometimes you get a front and a back sketch, which you never use, but it's just a nice way just to see the silhouette a bit. So this was the final result. So we're going to go over now how this was made. There was a lot of issues with this. Uh, performance, user workload, I had to work with animation cause, and gameplay because we wanted to have people coming out of it and then they would shoot you. Uh, it's a huge asset as well, so it would take a lot of performance. Uh, the a different departments collaborating and we were three weeks away from shipping. Uh, if I say TV, uh, how many people here work in the game industry, by the way? Okay, so I say three weeks away from shipping, that's when everything is on fire, people hate each other, and they want to stab each other. So what happened was that you said, like, let's not do this. Because, Matthias, you have three weeks before shipping, and you have to make this gigantic ass ship, you have to make a Sherman, which is a tank, you have to make some Venus vehicles, and you have to make the UFO, and some other small shit. With the small share, I mean, I'm the guy that when he gets the concepts, I'm like, oh, this looks amazing. I'm going to start on this. And what will happen is that all my other work stacks up. So I would never finish anything. I would always have like 90% finished, but ne not, not everything was completely baked or textured. It was like, it was just stacking up. So they were like, Matisse, you still have to fix all your other stuff. I'm like, yeah, I know, I know. But I mean, if you look at that concept again, I'm going to go quickly now. I mean, that looks so amazing. I was like, oh, we need this in the game. It's so big. It's so cool. Like, uh, they were like, we can use it for the next game. I was like, no, we need this. So everybody was saying, let's just skip it. I was like, no, no, no. I'm going to do it at home. So from 10 till 10, I was at the office just doing my standard work. And then from 11 till 4 o'clock at night, I would just take it home and work on it at home because it was such a big, cool shape. So first of all, I hate block arts. Um, I really hate them. I, can't, I don't stick with them. I have a problem with them because I'm like, it looks like shit. Yeah, you kind of restrict it to them afterwards. So like, I'm the guy that tries to have fun with block arts and just take the piss out of them. And this is how the block art looks for the tube transport. And you have to know that this goes to QA, this goes to Bethesda and stuff. So it's like, I don't care. You know, it it may looks it looks funny and all that stuff, but at least it's the correct size, it's the correct silhouette. And the thing why we did this is, it's a six 
tall vehicle and 8 meters high, we had to see if it fits into the environment. Because it's nice to spend a lot of time on this, but if we would put it in and we'd be like, oh shit, there's no place for the player to walk around there, or, or it's not fun because the enemies are, are all stacked against each other while, while fighting to the streets. We had to see if it worked, so if you could call, call an if you could jump on it. So it was important for us to just make sure it would work. Again, still far away from this, I think. Everybody can see that. And again, so three weeks away from shipping. So I have a sp this is now what we get to to the, to the actual presentations. I have a really strange way of working. Um, I like to start with the smallest detail on my design and work my way up. My architect is called Axel Tuvinius, and the thing is, my workflow does not make any sense to anybody. When I show him my work, he's like, Matthias, I don't see anything in this. How is this this? I'm like, wait, I can't do that. So I like to start with the smallest bolt and work my way up. This is how it looks to him. Till maybe the last day before shipping. Well, not shipping, but before the high poly or the low poly is done. So I start with the smallest details first. The smallest bolt and the big shapes are followed later. The reason I'm doing that is because I always feel when you do big shapes, you can get stuck with them. And you can keep changing your big shapes over and over again. And like, does this look okay? I'm going to tweak it. And when you do small details, like everybody look, knows how a bolt looks like. So everybody knows how a hatch looks like. You don't have to over-engineer or overthink it. You make a bolt, done. And you can, st you can start placing them based on the design. So it's basically you just make all your small details and you start placing them where you think they should be. And then you just see like, is there enough space between a and B, and then you can start moving stuff. And then when when you kind of happy, that's how I work. By the way, I'm not saying this is perfect because nobody else does this, but it works for me. Is when I see this, I'm like, okay, it looks like things make sense. Now I can just connect all these shapes up with the big shape, and it's done. Because I feel like if I do the big shape first and I make all the cuts, I'm like, now I'm stuck. Now I have to put my detail in that position if that makes any sense. So for me, that's how I like to design stuff: small piece first, and then the big shapes. Just think about Lego. If you think about children, to be honest, I'm a big child. There's a reason why we children get this. If you get a box of Lego, they get small bags, and they assemble the small bags, and when they got the small bags assembled, they assemble those things together, and they got the big piece. And that's how I think. I make the bolts, I make the hatch, I make the fuse boxes. When I got those, I put them together, and I got my final design. So see, it's not that stupid if you think about it. So again, this is how it looks to like maybe the last day before I do the big shape. And that's how I work. Um, this is, the, for example, the first day. I would start making all the hatches. I would start making the vents, all these pieces. And like you can see, I don't care about size or how big they are compared with each other. I just make stuff, and I don't want to overthink stuff. I just want to keep myself busy. Because um, so, I always feel like, you know, when you have to make something, and you're like, oh shit, I have five hours left. It's like you start panicking, you start overthinking stuff, and everything goes to shit. That's how I think it is. So just don't panic. Don't start crying. Don't be like... Uh, like 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 a drama queen, just start working on it and just see how far you get. So just start making pieces. And this is an example. So like you can see, you got this, and then you had this hatch, and I just like okay, I got these pieces now. Let's just combine them into a bigger piece now. And that's how I work. I like to just build up momentum. And once I got my smaller pieces, I'm going to combine them into something medium, and I like to have it flat. And then the final design is just tilted. So I always work flat, so I don't have to you know point like hold my neck in a strange position. I like to just work flat and it, it's a clean way. And in the final result, I just deform it, you know, I just rotate it. Or like you in Photoshop, you would just, I don't know how you say it, like, uh, uh, you know, transform it, basically. And then, yeah, once you got those, you can start on the bigger shapes. And again, once that's done, I just go back, make the headlights, make the, the add-ons for the headlights. Just And like you see, all these things are different scale. I don't care. At that point, I just want to keep making stuff, just keep myself busy. More stuff, uh, fuse boxes, add-ons, ha handles, whatever. Uh, and like you see, I, I don't keep myself restricted to one software. This was done in Modo, this was done in Max. Uh, this is the add-ons for the top. It's just everything is different size, everything is different colors and stuff. But I don't care. As long as it, I know these things are all going on the vehicle, it's good enough for me. I, I just want to keep myself busy. Um, and yeah, and same with the gun. Uh, I, I try to work in like stages, like I'm going to do some pieces for the Whoops, for the front, uh, and one for the top, and one for the back. It's basically like just making kits for the vehicle, if that makes any sense. And it's like I would say, like, for one hour, I'm going to work on the front. For one hour, I'm going to work on the back. And that way, you don't get tunnel vision. You keep yourself, f it keeps fresh. You don't, that's the problem. With the big shape, you could work on the big shape for six hours, and afterwards, you're like, delete, I didn't like it. Well, this, no. 
at least at the end of the day, you got a lot of different pieces, and then you feel productive. And again, always I always work flat, and then the final design is tilted. Yeah, this is it. It's it's. I'm not a good modeler or a good designer or anything. I'm just line. I just use the basics, and I just work in a really easy way. Same with the hatch on the back. It's just all flat, and then the final version is tilted. Uh, and f avoid hollow shapes. I know hollow shapes are super cool for designers and they add silhouette, but for games they're just a hassle because they eat up polygons or b a budget or tangles, whatever you want to call it. So we try to always fill up every small piece with with uh, shapes so we can bake it as boxes. This is an example. The duplex spot is a big piece, but at the end it's just still a game model, so it has to be optimized. And it looks super optimized, but you would be amazed how much I cannot. Cinemax does not allow us to share UVs or polygons, uh, but you would be amazed how expensive this is. Because um, at the end, it, the thing has six wheels and has a lot. The suspensions were super complicated, so those things add a lot of budget. Uh, yeah, so it looks cheap, but at the end, it's still a massive piece. Again, this is a piece from the front. The thing is super detailed. Of there's a lot of shapes, but that's just to make the low poly easy. Just a lot of shapes to make boxy low poly shapes, basically. Same with this, all these details, like you can see these bolts over here. They're just there so I can bake this as a box. It's basically adding details, so when you make the low poly later, you can be lazy. Uh, basically adding a lot of shit or details, so you can bake it as a box. Um, again, the vehicle had guns, but um, I'm not a gun nerd to begin with, but at the same time, I was like, I, I cannot spend two or four hours on making guns for this vehicle. So, yeah, I don't have the time for that. So the gun was super simplistic, but that it, it was just a small piece on the vehicle, if that makes any sense. So I, it's just a small part. So don't go crazy on like small pieces. It's the big image that counts. I can take the whole gun apart. It's super easy shapes. See? And then the low poly is also super easy. All this de you can say, oh, this looks detailed, like the, the the engine. It's like, yeah, all of the details are just there so you can bake it really easy as a box almost. You see how detailed this is, but this is almost boxy. Like all these details over here. So I can bake it as a box. Same with this. It's super noisy, but this is a box. And when I make something, I like, like I said, I think in stages. I'm like, today I'm going to do the bottom, then I'm going to do the middle, then I'm going to do the top, and then one the last day I'm going to use the back, the back and the front. So yeah, whoops. Yeah. Okay, and then the suspension, for example. Uh, it's important when you work on games to know what you're actually going to see. Uh, this is the, this is player height. This is how big a human is. So we knew that suspension had to be super detailed. It had to look super cool. So that's where the budget went to, to be honest. Um, it's, it's hidden behind the wheels, but we still you still see it. So this is where all the details went to. Again, does it look believable? The, could, could it work, basically? No, but it feels believable because of all the details and all, all the hinges and stuff. We don't have time to make sure everything works. We've got an amazing up, uh, animation department that kind of is able to fake everything in a good, cool way. Um, again, I don't care about when I make something about how if, thing l if all the add-ons are the same size or if it's the same color or if it's everything looks realistic. The only thing I care about is the things I'm going to see. Uh, so I like to put one reference person, like it's, this is BJ from the game. It's like I just like to put him everywhere and just have the camera in his eyeball so when I close to the camera, I can see what I would see as a player. And as long as that looks cool, I'm happy. Another example is the laser hunt. Shit, we got 20 minutes left. Okay, um, that means 10 minutes for this, and then 10 minutes for questions. Oh ho, then we're good, never mind. Okay, the laser hunt is uh, another example. Uh, like you see, we got an amazing concept again by Pei Gulab from the front, perspective, whatever, and then you got some sketches from the back and the side view. And that is really cool. It's like you get an amazing concept like this. But at the same time, there's a lot of freedom still to do whatever you want. Like this is not defined. It's like it's it's just a sketch, but it's super nice. Like you, as a as a TD artist, this is a dream because you still get the chance to design stuff while actually getting a visual language. Being like, this is what I want for the back. And again, this guy is amazing. He doesn't have our stage, but he's an amazing concept artist. Uh, this is the end result of the robot. And again, I started with a big shape first, because this was my first robot I ever made. And I was like, oh, this has to look amazing. But I started in a different way than I normally start. I started with a big shape, and that was a big mistake. Because like I said, I'm bad with big shapes. So what happened was I worked on this big shape for days, 
and I was never happy with it, and I'd always deleted it. I went home angry, I was like, this is not working, maybe I should not making, should not be making the robots. But then I was like, one day I was like, it's just another asset, it's not because it's a robot, it's, it's, I can do it. So I was like, well, I'm just going to approach it in the same way as I do with my other designs. And I was like, I'm going to start with the finger of the robot. And the reason I did that is, it just builds up confidence, it's, it's a small piece, but can build up confidence, momentum, and you're going to find the style and the, the, the art direction of it. And this is what I started with one weekend. I was like, I'm going to go home, I'm just going to make the fingernails. And I'm going to find out how they animate, how they have to look, how I can make them low poly, because again, it has to go into games. So kind of everything has to look boxy, but at the same time it had to work. So it was a really good way of just finding the animation and the style for the robot as well. And it's super easy, like it's not rocket science, this piece. It's just a small piece, but once I was done with it, I'm like, okay, cool. I know what I want. I know how I where I'm going to go now. And then I just work my way up. And that's how it works for me, building up confidence just by making small pieces. And I want to say that all these pieces, you can be like, this looks boring. Completely understand that. This looks like shit. I completely understand that. This looks cool to me. Once you actually combine all your shapes together, something can look cool. And that's what I like to do with my design. I like to layer stuff. Again, with organic shapes, with different colors, just to add a lot of layers of something on top of each other. Because I always feel, the more layers you have, the more believable something looks. It does not have to work, but I can. I hope that everybody can be like, this looks believable, just because it looks complicated and you got all these layers behind each other. Does it work? No. Uh, the nice thing was that it's a small robot, so the thing was that the animation te department could kind of fake it, and it was such an agile enemy, so it, it went so quickly that you, you would miss it, basically. Um, again, colors as well. Uh, when I make something, I like to make a small material library. Uh, I think it's really nice to just make a small library, like two metals, bare metal, a shiny metal, uh, maybe some zinc, some a base color, an accent color, some rubber, some plastic. That's it. Not not like ten sort of metal, not not ten sort of plastic. Just a really easy material library, and just start color coding your mesh, uh, so people kind of know how it would look from a f far distance. Like, is it too noisy? Are, are there too many colors? Um, and once I had the main shape I just started this was actually done with just the legs by the way this was not done uh, when I had the main legs done I would just start putting them in, in different motions just to see if it looked at this thing does it work and I was like okay it doesn't because over here like for it breaks like you can see uh, the, the, the arm kind of broke so I was like okay we need to redesign this and it's easy it's a really cool way of doing that because just imagine if you make your whole robot you design it or you make it you do the low poly you texture it you bake it and afterwards after all that's done you find out it doesn't work then we kind of in a bad situation so it's always nice to when you have a piece done that is that has to animate just send it off to an animation department or do it yourself just to see if it works you know just get ahead of the problems basically. There's nobody's gonna kill you. No, no nobody's gonna be nobody's gonna hate you if you just give them a work in progress file and be like, hey could you see if this anime is this gonna work for animation? Uh, and again when I make something I like to have it made like in a T pose or a static and then I would like to have a tilted version to see how it looks in game or in, in action if that makes any sense. And again, cloth, uh, I'm not a good sculptor, so <laughs> this is how I make stuff. It's really basic shapes and then I just add modifiers on top of it. Uh, make it a bit noisy, bend it, uh, and again, it's this is no example cloth, really easy to make. Uh, it's just strips, and then I just noise bend them, uh, and some more noise. Uh, same with the shoulder path. Uh, it's one strip, bend it, some noise, bend it a bit more, and then some sculpting. Uh, and I would like to say um, this is no example, not good at sculpting at all. Um, but then again, it's like it's a small piece of robot. Does it look amazing on its own? Not at all. But it's so small that it doesn't have to. Uh, this is the engine of the robot. It does not look amazing. I completely agree. It does not even make sense. The cloth looks like shit. I completely agree. But together, I think it looks believable. And again, it's a small robot. It's a small piece of a big design. As long as the fine image is cool, that's all that counts. And I don't have five days to make this cloth. This was made in like... I think like one hour, like before lunch, I remember. And I was like, it, uh, d no, it's it's good enough. Um, it's the final image that counts, not the small little piece on it. It's not the art station image that counts. It's the thing that goes in game. Um, and then volumes. Volumes for me are something different than silhouette. 
uh, with volumes we always think about shapes that you add on top of each other, like these shields. All these shields are pointing in a different way. You can see that one is pointing down, one is pointing up, and the other one is pointing that way. Uh, so they all overlap each other, but one is pointing exactly like this, the other one is like that, and the other one is maybe like this. And they basically add depth to your design. And we actually found out, it's pretty cool, um, that once you start shooting it, they fell off. And that was really cool, because then people are like, oh, this is the weak spot. So the more layers and volumes you have, basically shapes, so shapes on top of each other that point in different directions, the cooler it gets, because you add depth to your design. I think that's really cool. Uh, that works for everything on the robot of all my designs. I like to add layers on top of each other that you could shoot off while m the main ship still follows the same line. It goes up and then the cables follow along as well. But it it's just layers on top of each other. Uh, and again, when I make stuff, I did not start with a big shape. I start with the bolts. It's super strange, but I start cutting out the, sh the, the bolt shapes first or the voids, like you would say. And I wanna, once that was done, I would connect them up. So I would be like, okay, this is where I'm going to have my bolts and I'm just going to connect them up. I c you probably like thinking like this is the strangest way of working, and everybody at machine games thinks that as well. But it works for me. It's just like I wouldn't know how a bolt look like. You just make the bolt, and then just make the hole for the bolt. And once you got the hole of the bolt, you just f connect the holes up. And again, what I like to do is just like do paint offs afterwards, see if my topology was okay. Uh, this was a bad one. Uh, this should not have gone like this. It should have gone a bit further. But it's just nice to kind of do over paints and see what you did wrong afterwards. When you make something in 3D, in 3D, it's nice to make a side view, a front view, and see which shape you like. Uh, and then at the end, you're like, oh, these two are nice. Now then, you just combine them into 3D. Uh, easy stuff. It's it's not rocket science, it's just finding cool shapes. 10 minutes, okay, cool. Again, the mouth. Uh, is it complicated? This may be like, oh, how do you make something like this? Real easy, you make it flat. So like this, and then you just make sure you have enough topology lines, and then you just bend it. So it was bent twice, uh, like this, and then the second time. And again, as long as your topology is clean, like you can see, clean topology, it's easy to make any shape. And that way it was easy when my article came over, it's like, oh, I would like to have the mouth a bit more bulky. It was just easy to just change my modifier and call it done. So don't go hardcore with all your shapes. You, you don't have time in the industry. It's about speed as well, uh, speed for the production. Uh, same with the shields, uh, made them flat, and then just bend them, bend them. And again, like I do all the time, I like to have my stages front, middle, back. So I know I'm going to work on the front for today, the middle tomorrow, and the back the day afterwards. And that's even when I make the proxy or the mocap version, uh, I do that. Now, I make sure I have slices to my mesh so I know where the front is, where the back is in the middle. So when the animation department comes in, they know where it's going to move, you know, where where's the pivot point for the mo the animation. And then I always make sure that matches up, of course, with the high poly. That's really important. Um, so, yeah. And again, like you see, the proxy looks nothing like the high poly. Uh, the main shape is different. But that doesn't matter. As long as the animation points are the same, like the, the legs are exactly the same. Those are the same. But the main, the details are not. And that, nobody cares. As long as the animations are correct or the, the rigging information stays the same, it's good. And this is an example. So everything was done. All the details were done, and I was like, now I have to do the big shape, you know? Because, like I said, that was the main problem. So I started from the inside with a circle. Why a circle? Because a circle is a perfect shape. So it's not it's not something you have to get into a conversation about. It's a circle. It's a shape, you know? And the radius is the same. So I started with the inner circle, and I just worked my way up. And the reason I do that is because, let's say you start with a circle. You're like, okay, I'm going to give myself 18 edges. Uh, could have been more, I don't know, 18 edges, and then you know, like, okay, I got 18 edges to work my way out. While when, when you work from the outside, wh who knows how many edges you're going to have left to make that perfect circle, if that makes any sense. So I like to work from the inside and then just spread my edges till I reach the outside, if that makes any sense. Uh, and that's something, yeah, uh, like you see, I use floaters as well. Uh, I do that because, uh, like I said, I don't have... I think it's way more important to clean to keep clean topology than having to kind of hassle or cut your shapes into that. So use floaters if you don't have enough edges, just put them on top of that. Nobody cares. And again, afterwards, see if the silhouette is interesting enough, uh, and do some paint overs afterwards. Uh, see if because you can work day and night on something, and then you go home and like I did an amazing job. But it's nice to come back the next day and just open up your file and paint over it and see your mistakes. And that's a really good way of working because that way you like you know what to do the next day. It's not like, oh, what am I going to do today? Well, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to fix my fuck-ups, if that makes any sense. 
and then at the end just add some s silhouettes or some add-ons that make up the symmetry. Something in the same color, the same material, but something that adds something to the main shape from the front view or the back view. And the last example is the Honeybee VT, which is the UFO. Uh, how many days did you guys think I have to make this? That would have been amazing. I had three days to make that. And I was like, this concept is amazing. I was like, but it's so only three days. And I, was, I could have been like, I could have faked out, like, oh, we can't, we can't do that. But the more you talk about it, the more you complain, the more time you lose it, that makes any sense. I mean, the shipping date was 27th of October. So I was like, they're not going to move it because Matisse wants to make a UFO, you know? That's the amount of days I had, so I had to do it. So I used the same methods. Uh, this is, by the way, how it looked. So how do I start? I was like, oh, this cable looks really cool. And my producer was like, Matthias, we're probably not going to see that cable. Wouldn't you start with the thing that is important, you know, the main, the main camera focus. I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to start with the cable. It's like, Jesus, dude, you've got three days to make this. I'm like, yeah, I don't care, I'm going to start with the cable. So I started with the cable. Why? Because everybody knows how a cable looks like. It's not something you have to over-engineer. It's not something you have to be rocket science for. It's like, I know how a cable looks like. Let's just make some cables. And I started with the cable, and I was like, you know what? This actually looks pretty cool. And it kind of gave me momentum, and I was like, I can do this, you know? And I knew the color scheme, I knew the design I wanted to go for, I knew the visual language, and I was like, okay, that's done. And then I just started making random pieces for the UFO. All these things are in the concept. Uh, I'm not going to go back and forth with the concept now, but all these things are in the concept. Are they one-to-one -to, -one to the concept? No. Again, when you play the game, you guys don't see the concept, so that, that doesn't matter. Um, the important thing is this, that it looks believable. So it's a lot of different stuff. Uh, and then when I got bored, I was like, I'm just going to start making add-ons for the, for the control panels and just random stuff. Did they all make it into design? No. Like this did not make it into the design. But then we used it on something else, on another design. So all these things are not thrown away. Uh, yeah. So you got TVs, you got add-ons, you got switches, whatever, cables, and all these things were useful. Um, and I kept myself busy. There was not a moment I was like, oh, I'm not going to make it. It's like, I'm, I got all these things. I got fuse boxes, I got add-ons, I got cables, I got I got enough. For, I'm going to have enough to and for the last day to put it all together just to make some walls and call it done. So yeah, all these things were done in three days. And it was small stuff from the hinges that would connect up the window to TVs, to the grill that the, the chair would move, on, move up on, uh, to the hinge that he would control or the, the main control panel. And again, these things all on their own don't look interesting or don't make any sense. I completely agree. But it's the overall image that counts. Um, and again, these things, like you saw, I got one concept. I'm going to go back quickly now. None of it, like if you, this guy is on our station, he's Christophe Lovies. You know, it's fine. You're going to, if you zoom in, you're going to, you kind of know the shapes, but it's not all defined because it's kid bashed or photo bashed, of course. And that's really cool. You still get a lot of freedom. And that's, that's what I like. It just as long as the main shape looks the same, whoops, it's good enough. And once I got all my details done, I started with the walls and the floor. So basically, I made a chair. I made the stuff to go between the chair, like this thing. And I made the the light and the pipes. And when I knew like all these pieces are in the correct place, I'm like, okay, this is two meters long. That means I have to make a two meter long floor. And then I was like, okay, just make the floor module, like the thing that is selected. You see, and that's how it work. I I would never start with this because I'm like, how how can I know the the length of this without making the chair first or the, you know. That, if that makes any sense, it's a strange way, but I, it's like it's like you would say to somebody who builds a house, I'm first gonna make the kitchen stove before I'm gonna make the walls. It, it does not make sense, but I would like it's like I like to say like like if you make a car, you would first make sure you make the engine and you make the chairs, and then you say, okay, this is the size I have now. This I'm gonna build my hood around the engine. Does that make any sense? You know, um, this is the final result. Does it look amazing? No, but for three four days, I think it's good enough. And then the camera view came, and that's what you saw. <laughs> I did not cry, but I must say it was defeated. <laughs> um, and it was quite funny because I was like, you know, it's like it would have killed you to put like a light over here so I could see my work. But at the same time, I think it looks pretty cool. Like it, it looks dramatic. Like I showed you what what's in what it's about dramatic lighting. Uh, and of course, BJ was the main focus, not the amazing UFO. If that makes any sense. So yeah. Just to summarize, keep yourself busy, don't overthink. If you design something, start with the small stuff first, don't start with the big shapes. Do stuff like you wanted to do it. Like I know I played at machine games, kind of gets a heart attack to, me to see how I work. It's like, how, what is he doing? But it's like, I know it's going to work. And just trust me. Um,
and escape tunnel vision. Uh, if you keep working day and night, make sure that the day ne next day you start fresh by asking feedback or just asking some f fresh eyes to look at your work. Uh, so that's what we like to say. It's never overthink stuff. It's just life on Earth. Just it's e just it's just designing at the other day. Nobody's gonna come to it like this is not gonna work. It's like maybe it's not, but it's an entertainment. It looks believable. It looks cool. That's all that counts. Uh, NASA's probably like, why the fuck is he using our pictures? But it's like I like to think like this. I make the inside first. I make sure everything is in place. And once everything is done, I'll cover it up with a big shape. Um, and then I got how many minutes left? Sorry. <laughs> Two, one, one minute. Okay, quickly. Personal work. I like to say personal work is really cool, but like try to get away from your own professional work. Um, I work on Wolfstein, I work on Doom, I work on some other titles that are not announced yet, but uh, it's nice to be able to switch styles. Like when I work on Doom, I have to have a, and there's not an art direction than Wolfstein. It's m less about curved shapes, it's more about hard shapes and not m that many balls. It's more about really s generic sci-fi more. Uh, this is something I did in my free time. It's like a sci-fi World War II vehicle. The problem with that was, the moment I posted that, it was like some people like, oh, Wolfstein 2 got leaked. I was like, no, it's not. It's my own personal work. So I tried to get your personal work away from your professional work, if that makes any sense. Um, that's what I try to do with my own work now, doing some sci-fi stuff on my own. Um, stuff that is still kind of sci-fi, but it's more grounded into reality. Uh, less over-engineered, less details. Uh, yeah, these are some examples. Uh, like patterns that I don't like. I said I'm a big fan of Call of Duty: Infinite Warfare. I think those designs are amazing. So I like to use, I do stuff that I don't get to do at the office, like sci-fi patterns, like you know, like stuff that I don't get to do at machine games. Because that way you grow as an artist. If you keep being stuck in the same routine as you are at the office, you're not gonna learn anything new. Uh, and we're gonna skip this because we don't have time. It's the same idea. Okay. <laughs> okay, Matthias. Thank you very much for yeah. this. Truly amazing uh, speech, and uh, uh, I would uh, we shortened a little bit our question section just to get more opportunity for our speaker to just show uh, his slides, even though we <laughs> we have some lack of time. So people, uh, we are happy to hear some questions for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, hello. Uh, there were some um, um, trailers before the release of the stand to uh, like a cinematic um, stylized uh, um, TV ads, yeah. like Nazi TV ads. Uh, have you done some cinematic stuff like uh, this watch machine robots? Or? Um, the robot that was used in that was a Panzer and that was made by Torfrick. But that one was actually the high-poly model that went, went into the game. So we don't make unique assets for the advertisement. It was what went into the game, went into the advertisement. Uh, maybe some different texture variation, because it was a bit grimy. But it's the same asset. We yeah. Uh, but that stuff is actually not done by us. We send. It's basically marketing, asking like, can we have this and this, and we just send it off to them, and they take care of it, which is amazing. We don't have. We don't handle that stuff at Machine Games. It gets. It gets done by the Zenimax or Bethesda marketing team. So yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, how many polygons does your vehicle one approximately has? I'm not really allowed to talk about polygons. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it's not. It's, I, I would love to talk about it, but it's the thing is, Cinemax is quite. They see it as magic, which is not. It's like it's it's just polygons, you know. Okay. But uh, I would say it's more. It's it's not crazy. Uh, it's like I talked to some people from CG Project and some people from. Um, uh, Call of Duty, and it's the same style as all the other games. We don't go crazy. The only thing we go crazy with is the size of the thing, and that's the problem. Like we get the same budget, but it's mm. ten times bigger. So we have to kind of go with a plan, but uh, it's not crazy. Um, okay, yeah. thank you. No problem. And sorry, we we cannot talk about that. <laughs> um, thank you for your amazing speech. I have one question: How many hours per day you have been working during the eight months period before joining Machine Games? Um, before like um. You mean like on the m before getting to the industry, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that would be the same. Like I would sleep and eat and that was it. I would lock myself up in my room and I was like, it was my hobby. So I would, I would say as well, 16 hours a day. But then when I joined Machine Games, I was like, okay, I'm going to slow down. But then, so I worked on new uh, Wolfstein 
new uh, Wolfstein uh, Old Blood, and then I just worked eight hours. But then when I got into the full production of New Colossus, and they said, like, Matisse, you're going to make all the robots in the vehicles. I'm like, now I have to prove myself. But uh, when I was a student, um, yeah, I would just basically sleep, eat, and work, because I had I, that was my hobby, so I don't regret it. So yeah, it's amazing that you have survived this. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just I, I think and I can say everybody can do this. I'm not smart. I'm not. You can see I'm not. I'm not tall or smart or whatever you can say. I just work, and you, you can in this industry. That's the only thing you need. I don't have a degree. I don't have anything. It's just work. Show your work off. Make progress. Listen to people. Be not be. Don't be a dick. And it's you're gonna get in the industry. Really, don't be a dick. That's all I can say. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, I have a small question. Yeah, there is a question. Perfect. Uh, hello, Matthias. Hi. Uh, I want to ask, uh, everybody know about percentage of uh, huge mass, medium mass, and small masses. So, uh, as I understood, you can just uh, create a placeholder for huge mask with your small deletion. Yeah. And just fill it with the huge mask that huge exactly. mass. Yeah, yes? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so that's so. what I do. Just all the small pieces. And then when it's done, I'm like, OK, the big shape is going to be an empty shape. So I just have yeah. to make it. Yeah, so uh, uh, it is not a reinvention. It's just uh, uh, look it from other side to the same process. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Uh, uh, it is not a question, maybe. No, no, it was more confirmation. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Uh, well, well th thank you for your speech. And uh, I have a question regarding your personal work. Yeah. So, for example, you were working on uh, Wolfenstein 2. Yeah. And uh, then, well, at the same time, you were you were doing some personal projects. Yeah. And uh, were there any cases when, uh, well, you're doing your personal projects and you, well, it actually turns out well? And you see that uh, it could be implemented in the game, and then you go to your yeah. uh, to, to, to your manager or director, and uh, well, suggest uh, you say that I have well, this thing, and yeah. uh, it would it would be cool to to have it in the game. What happened would be uh, at some piece. There's a lot of pieces that I actually don't post. I'm like, because uh, I'm like, we could use them for machine games later, or we could not be using them for machine games. But there was one example. I made a hospital car, and I thought like, oh, this could be in Wolfenstein. My art deal was like. It could be, but at the same time, like, I'm pretty sure my concept artist could do a better job. But it's like, I like piece A and B on this design, we get them out, and if you won't give them to us, you know. But it never happened that I gave a whole design to Machine Games, because my architect himself is quite picky if it comes to design. So he's, he, he was like, I, there's some pieces on it I like, and if we could always use them on, on the final design. But we also have the rule that, um, and I think that makes sense, if you post something on per personal work, you cannot give it afterwards to machine games in the same way around. It's not like I can take my professional work and take it apart and make something personal out of it. But uh, sure, sometimes it happens like I, I would go to my tape like, hey, this is something you could use for Wolfenstein. And he would be like, I'll get back to you on that. And then it may basically means I just keep it on the side till he comes back to me. Uh, but that happened. Made, like I made a robot once. I'm like, and I was scared, like, does this look too much like Wolfenstein? And the thing was, we hadn't, Wolf, we hadn't uh, announced Wolfstein 2, and he was like, no, nah, it's fine, you can post it. So it's, it goes both ways. It's like making sure that if you make something, it will not hint to the next game as well. Um, but it's not, and it never happened that I would make something in my personal work and it would go immediately into the game. No. Um, I'm not saying it would sometimes happen that my artist is like, I would like to have a vehicle, and Matisse, you can do whatever you want. And that, that happens. Like, but it's, it never starts from the idea of personal work then. Yeah. 